In the next couple of videos, we're going to be covering the basics of FM as a method. So in the last video, we really used FM as a special effect. It wasn't something we had to choose. We still had filters. You know, you could go through the wavetables. There was a lot we could do, and FM was kind of just like the cherry on top. But with an instrument here like the FM4, I don't see a filter. I don't see an option to choose any kind of different wave shape which means that we're gonna have to use this modulation matrix in FM if we wanna get something more diverse and more interesting than just like a sine wave, or in the case of this instrument, it's more of like a triangle wave. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm going to clear out what's going on in the mod matrix. So I'm gonna take this amplitude envelope and I'm just gonna create a static gate message here and we can see what's going on. Okay. We're getting something that looks similar to like a triangle wave. And typically you would expect to just get a sine wave here. But I think the reason why this instrument has opted for something, you know, between a sine and a triangle is because we don't have six oscillators. We only have four. So it will be useful to have those um, other partials and harmonics there to grab onto to really get you still a pretty uh, dense and rich sound if you need it. It might be hard to generate that with just four um, with without it. All right, so what we can see is we have these four different oscillators here, and I can bring them all in by just going into the mix section. So we're not applying any FM at all. We're just actually bringing in additional oscillators. So there's two, there's three. Oh, that's the noise. And there's four. Ah, so this is kind of interesting here right off the bat with what I'm seeing. And what really you normally would see would just be sine waves. So this kind of makes it confusing since we see so much else popping up. But we have our course tuning option here. And so this is going to be interesting. Let's just kind of follow and see what happens at these different levels just from number one. All right, I'm going to hit a note. All right, this is playing a C. And I'm hitting a C and it's key tracking as I would expect. If I go up to two and I hit the same note, all right, it's now playing a C4, so the last one was a C3. When I go up to three, what do you think is gonna happen? Well, it's no longer playing a C, it's now at a G, which is actually the perfect fifth of the C major scale and the uh, third overtone in the harmonic series. I go to four, we're back to a C again. I go to five, we now find ourselves at E, which is the major third. So what this course tuning is actually showing us is the harmonic series, okay? And to uh, highlight this even further for you, if we go and we use the uh, static Hertz option, if I go to like 110, that would be an A. All right, an A2. If I go to 220, and we're going up the harmonic series, so it's just additive here. If I go up to 220, we have A an octave higher, we're at A3. If I go to 330, we can see that we have an E, which is the fifth in A, right? A, B, C, D, E. If we go up to 440, we'll have ourselves another A. If we go up to 550, we should expect the major third, which is going to be a C sharp, I believe, I think so. Uh, and so you can see how this is following along the same logic. Only here at the bottom, this is remaining static. So no matter what note I hit, regardless of key, it's just generating that statically. So in the case of learning FM, sometimes it's a little bit easier to use this static mode because the other one is actually key tracking. So people get a little bit confused sometimes with ratios, but you can emulate and get a perfect ratio um, if you know exactly what sort of frequency you want to modulate by. So in the case of FM, it typically makes the most sense if you're going for something very harmonic, something that's going to have a smooth harmonic series to follow at like logical integer or multiple multiple values of something. So if we use the fundamental here at 110, we can actually go in here and use this modulation matrix to modulate 110 by itself. Okay, what does that exactly mean? But we have 110 hertz, and then we're going to modulate that pitch by 110 hertz, and we're going to see what it generates here for us. It's going to give us something similar to a sawtooth wave. I'm just setting depth here. And 
so we can see what happens, right? So let's imagine for a second that I wanted to create like a super saw. Is it possible for me to do that here in this instrument? Absolutely it is. And I could do it either with the coarse tuning or with these offs, uh, just the uh, static hertz control. And I'm going to use the static hertz control here. We're going to go to number two and we're going to put this at like 220, go an octave higher, bring some of that in. And then we can slightly offset them. like that's kind of cool go up and let's go 440 let's go another octave higher we'll do the same kind of thing and what I'm gonna do is I will eventually be going in here and uh, adding in the FM in fact let's go and add the FM now before I forget so we have two now playing so we have to go two and two so it's following the rows so if I want to take uh, anything in number two if I want to modulate it by number one I'd have to go and do that from here if I want to use three, but I'm just going to go two by itself so I can get more of like a saw wave. And now let's bring in some of number one. And then we'll do the same thing with number three. And then for the last one, why don't we actually just give ourselves like a sub? So let's take 110 and we'll divide that by two, which I believe is 55. And now with this one, if I just want a sub, I probably don't want to apply a whole lot of FM to it. Maybe a little just to get a little something happening. And now let's bring these all in. setting it there. So believe it or not, it is possible to generate like a super saw out of an FM instrument that is still basically just using sine waves by doing a technique or a strategy uh, like this. But let's get into actually using other oscillators to control um, you know, or sh I should say going with classic FM. So using like oscillator two to FM onto oscillator one. And the correct terminology for this would be like modulators and carriers. Carriers are things that are actually outputting sound. So in this example here, it would just be oscillator number one. And let's get, uh, we'll stay in Hertz mode for here. So it's, uh, it's outputting at 110 Hertz. And then if we want to modulate 110 Hertz by oscillator two, which is 220 Hertz, we just go here. This is following rows. So right now, since number one is the only thing outputting sound, if I go to rows two through four, it's not going to do anything, obviously. So we'll just bring all those back. But if I want to apply some FM here, finally, <laughs> I'm going to go in 220 and then just set the depth. And so you can see how big of a difference this has as compared to doing it on itself. So using different values makes a huge difference here. Let's go in and take this back to like, we'll just use 441. Maybe apply a little bit of that. Ah, interesting. So when we go offset a little bit, you can hear that pitch moving. If we go too far, it'll start to sound way out of tune. like in this sort of range. And that's why it is useful to, if you're trying to generate something very much harmonic, to kind of lock it in or to get something close. You can hear as it's falling into phase. And a little bit of movement isn't a bad thing. But it would be pretty boring if the sound just had to be static like this all the time. And that's where the envelopes come in. So typically in an FM synth, you'll find that envelopes are directly tied to oscillators. That's not the case here. I could use envelope two to control pretty much anything inside of this instrument. But if we're doing classic FM, we would use an envelope to control the mod amount. All right, so if I go in here, go full blown there, we're gonna hear the sound dense right at the beginning and then it's gonna decay back away to just that first like triangle type wave. Let's make it longer. We'll see how it 
dies away like so. And then with number three, maybe I'll have this fade in and fade out. This is still kind of boring. When this gets really interesting is when you start to then kind of combine things. So let's imagine that we put something like totally random in here, like uh, 912, okay, for number four. And then let's say that I wanted number four to actually modulate number two. I'd come to number two, all right, and I'd go over to four. And so four is going to be modulating two. And then this is going to completely change around the sound once I start to bring in depth on that. And it's only going to impact the beginning of that sound, right? So let's watch and see what happens. So here I can kind of get a setting that I like. When I go full in, we start to get something a little bit richer. Let's also use a little bit of number four onto number three. So I go to number three, all right, and then I go over to the four slot. We could obviously then use some kind of envelope on this too. And maybe I'll start this in the middle and do something like this. So you can see how you can generate some really uh, rich and interesting textures here. Now, what is this really useful for? Okay, what would this really be useful for? Well, let's go and let's kind of clear this out. We'll bring all these back to zero. And we'll, excuse me, and we'll use the coarse tuning instead, just because that is going to key track as we would normally expect it to. And I'm just going to bring the mod down, bring everything out here for now. So we'll just be back with our triangle wave. Okay, let's bring this up to one. All right, now I'm getting what I'd expect. So what this is really useful for, like an instrument like FM, an FM instrument is, let's say that you wanted to have a sub bass, but you wanted to make sure that you had a little bit more going on so that it's gonna translate onto different systems. You can use FM and get a nice kind of interesting balance and blend going. So for example, I could bring this up to say, we'll use three as an example. And then I'm gonna take three and have that modulate one. Which envelope is being used onto that? Let's just clear all these off. Oh, I'm sorry. I have the wrong thing selected. I have to use two. That's what always confuses me when you actually <laughs> have the number correspond differently. This is actually number two. So if I find like a nice blend, have something like this happening, find something that I like if I want to keep it static. And then with number three, what I might do is go up to two and I would just have this outputting slightly at octave higher. All right, and then on number two, I might take this envelope and use it and have it then slowly kind of decay away. And so it sounds a little bit buzzy in this octave range, but if I go up an octave or down an octave, sorry. get that little bit of movement which is nice as well and then if we were to run 
this into a saturator, get a little more harmonic distortion. This is how I make like 99% of any kind of sub or low bass element that needs to sit in a track because it's so pure and it's so clear and so clean. And I have like complete control over the harmonic content. And if I wanted, let's say just a little bit of something uh, spicy happening up in the top, I could go in here, turn on number four, bring this up to something high like 16. Yeah, 16 is going to be too massive. Let's go to 8. I'm just going to apply a little bit of that in. Should be able to try 16. And I'm talking literally a touch. Maybe there. Maybe also have number four controlling number two just a little bit. obviously still need kind of like a high pass filter just to uh, make sure you don't have anything really low and rumbly but that's kind of the general idea and so what FM is really useful for and even this instrument is attempting to emulate like real world sounds so if I go in here I think the best one in this instrument I think the one that's done the best is the FM uh, bass clarinet I think is actually pretty good let's go up We can kind of see what's going on here in the spectrum. And it's very subtle, really. The modulation that's occurring. And the one thing that's really annoying is the noise that comes in at the beginning, trying to emulate the breath. I really don't like that, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Add additional overtones in. <laughs> Have the clarinet being bowed, so that's just really changing like the attack. interested to know what's this modulating uh, just EQ stuff so yeah the majority of presets that you're gonna load up are gonna have a lot of effects stacked on them so let's just go in and turn them all off and hear how good of a job it's done we can leave the dynamics and the peak limiter on there that's just making things louder <laughs> So yeah, very harsh, very kind of digital sounding, but that's the effect that you expect from FM synthesis, right? It can't capture all of the nuance, but it can capture eh, just enough of it to where you know that it's synthesized, but it still kind of harkens back to the real acoustic instrument. That's kind of the effect. That's kind of the vibe that you get when you go with something like FM. All right, thank you.